So this is the instrumented sit ski. We've got a uh, number of different sensors on here. On here we've got a uh, three-axis accelerometer mounted on the uh, foot plate. We've got a linear potentiometer here, which is measuring the deflection in the shock absorber as the ski goes over a bump. Uh, we've also got pressure sensitive uh, films under here, measuring the distribution of load on between the sit ski and the ski itself as uh, the skier turns. We've also got a uh, nine degree of freedom absolute orientation sensor, which measures uh, three axis acceleration, um, also measures angular rate and orientation. Um, and that is mounted on uh, the GoPro chest plate here. So we can get the skier's orientation in comparison with the sit ski. We have another one of these for comparison mounted inside the uh, data logger which is at the rear of the sit ski here. This is all powered by the simple battery pack mounted on top of the back of the sit ski. The project started about a year ago when the HVM Catapult was trying to find ways to show off all of the capability that we've got across seven centres. Normally if we're doing projects for people who are big OEMs who might make aero engines or planes or cars, it's so commercially sensitive to them that we're not allowed to talk about our projects. So we asked our engineers to tell us the things that they're really good at but they weren't able to tell the world about. Um, I happened to be in Teen last year and saw the Para-Alpine Sit Skiing Championships. And when I went and spoke to the athletes, I realised that there was this amazing device that never really had any engineering effort put into improving it and all of a sudden it twigged that all of these technologies we use in high value manufacturing could help make these sit skis faster, make them lighter, make them more comfortable and ultimately make them perform better for the athletes who use them. Uh, it was really fortuitous that I got in touch with Anna who is double Paralympian, has got loads of experience and she was also really over the moon to work with us um, and what we're doing here today is doing testing of a number of different technologies that we've, that we've put onto the project to gather data so that we can come up with a new design which meets all of the improvement criteria that she needs. So today we've been basically collecting data for um, the design process. We'll use that data in um, kinematic and finite element analysis to um, model what we've got at present and then uh, develop the models to give us better performance of the products. Um, the aim is to make a carbon fibre spring system um, which we hope will give us better um, dynamic properties over bumps and help the skier perform better. So at the moment one of the big problems with the sit ski is the weight of it. Um, which obviously is a handicap when you're trying to um, carry it around ski resorts, climb up ski lifts. Uh, composites obviously give us a, the possibility of light weighting and we would hope to make significant weight savings using composites while still keeping strength and performance required. Traditionally sensors would be very expensive, talking in the region of £300 up. But with the use of mobile phone technology and MEM sensing designed for things like the Raspberry Pi, we've been able to vastly reduce the cost by about tenfold. And we've also utilised lower cost instrumentation, which would have cost thousands down to just hundreds for a fully functioning system with Wi-Fi the lot. These low cost alternatives, up to ten times or more, cheaper than your conventional sensors are proving that they can survive in a wide range of harsh environments. This test particularly proves that they can survive the cold and the wet and the horrible environments that would kill some sensors and the previous generations of sensors that came before them. This technology can therefore be used anywhere where you'd have a regular sensor such as in a packaging environment, in a machining environment, aerospace, automotive, where there's a sensor, these can work. Okay, so on this project, we wanted to measure the behavior of the skier as they went down the slope. To do this, we usually use a conventional load cell, but because of the design of the existing ski, 
we couldn't fit one between the seat and the ski itself. We had to get CPI to help us in designing a thin film load cell to go between the ski and the seat so we could measure the pressure distribution as they went down the slope. So the pressure sensitive film we're using will come in really useful in applications where there isn't much room to fit a load measuring device such as a load cell or strain gauges. For example, underneath bolt heads can be a really challenging uh, place to put load cells. So you, by using a pressure sensitive film, you can remove the need to fit quite a thick load cell. At the Paralympics, uh, Anna had an over 70 mile an hour crash in the sit ski and one of the consequences of that crash was the front cowling was very, very badly damaged. Now that's made out of carbon fibre and people think of carbon fibre as not being repairable. So what we've done at the NTC is taken that cowling, made a repair and what we've shown to industry is that you can use carbon fibre for structures that are going to get damaged. It's a, a technology that can be repaired, it offers great performance benefits. So I've just got my new refitted monoski fairing back from the National Composite Centre. It looks amazing. As you may know, I had a really big crash in Sochi and it got completely smashed up. So really excited and they even got the Paralympic Lion on it. So we've got a number of technologies in the HVM catapult and we often apply them to one industry sector but we struggle to transfer them, say between aero, auto, food, agriculture. The purpose of this project is to show that even in a complex environment at minus five degrees in snow, working with a Paralympic athlete, if the technology can work here and we can prove that it works, hopefully we can achieve the spread across industry, which will improve productivity for the UK economy. AFRC, the Advanced Forming Research Centre, have helped us look at how metal components could be optimised to be as lightweight and as high performing as possible. CPI have done the pressure sensitive films. Warwick Manufacturing Group have helped us with the teardown analysis and also the metrology to capture the settings that Anna and Ben both have on their sit skis at the moment. AMRC have helped us with concept design and with some parametric design modelling. MTC have helped using um, instrumentation and mobile phone technology in a way that it was never intended to do and NCC are here because they're going to help us design a new sit ski which is pushing composites in a way that it isn't normally used showing how that's relevant to new industrial sectors. Can you imagine lugging a 20 kilo monoski around a ski resort when you're in a wheelchair? It has its challenges but high value manufacturing catapult has a whole range of technologies for making it lighter, more manoeuvrable and improving ski performance and these technologies are really relevant in a whole load of other industries and applications. When I started the project I didn't know a whole lot about manufacturing engineering but I've realised how exciting it is. I've really learned a lot from the team and discovered that actually manufacturing engineering is really relevant to so many things. Mm -hmm.